Pablo Escobar was one of the biggest drug kingpins that ever set foot on Earth. But he couldn't have made it without his right-hand man, Barry Seal, who lived a life much stranger than what's told in fiction. He was a drug smuggler, double-crosser, and an extraordinary pilot. Let's take a deep dive into the true story of Pablo Escobar's smuggler, Barry Seal. Barry was indeed a talented pilot who was one of the principal importers of cocaine into North America in the 1980s via a remote airstrip in a backwater of West Arkansas. But that wasn't always the plan for him. Barry was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in 1939. Seal had developed a deep love for flying at the very early age of just 15. And by the age of 15, he was the budding airman who had taken his first solo flight. When he was just 16, he had gained his full pilot's license, which really attests to his talent and his passion for flying. As his first job, he was tasked to tow advertising banners behind his tiny Cessna plane. That was before he slipped into his role of flight engineer at Trans World Airlines back in 1968. His natural talent and deep passion for planes started to shine through, and soon, Seal was installed as one of the youngest pilots ever in the TWA fleet. His first documented run-in with the law for a smuggling offense took place in 1972, when he was one of the eight people who were arrested for a plot to smuggle explosives out of the U.S. Though he wasn't convicted, he certainly lost his job with TWA. But how did such a straight-edge pilot become a drug smuggler in the first place? Well, according to Seal's wife, Deborah, the pilot started taking risks by starting to smuggle small amounts of marijuana across the border by plane in about 1975. By 1978, Seal decided it was time to step up to something more illicit and lucrative, such as cocaine. Largely because, in his own words, coke was pound for pound much more profitable in comparison to marijuana. You'd be surprised to know that there were many pounds. On each journey on his favorite route from Nicaragua to Louisiana, Barry was reported to move around 1,000 to around 1,500 kilos of cocaine in just one trip. And if you asked him, that was pretty much a joke to him. John Roberts, who was a veteran and fellow smuggler in the 1970s cocaine scene, also had something to say about Barry. According to him, Barry would work at the drop of a hat, and he didn't care all that much about it. He would get in his plane, and he'd go down there and would throw around a thousand kilos on the plane and would come back to Louisiana, as recollected by Roberts. Soon, Seal's talent and the sheer bravado that he radiated attracted the attention of the Medellin cartel and their mogul leader, Pablo Escobar. It was on the suggestions presented by Pablo Escobar that Seal moved his favorite airstrip away from Louisiana and over to West Arkansas. And it was on a particularly heavy-loaded strip where he would carry Median cocaine and later finally get busted by DEA foot soldiers. The pilot was charged with conspiracy to distribute around 462 pounds of cocaine, estimated to have a street value of around $168 million. This would have put Seal away for life in prison, but Seal had figured another way out. After he was sentenced, Seal decided to approach the DEA and offered to negotiate with them. And soon, he became a government informant, claiming that he was perhaps the best person to shine a light on the Median operations that occurred in North America, Colombia, and Nicaragua. The best entrap their prey, the DEA instructed Seal to carry on with business as usual and to keep flying through the various smuggling routes. They loaded his plane up with many high-tech surveillance types of equipment, including what's considered as the most expensive cryptic radio communications that they had ever seen at that time, according to DEA agent Ernest Jacobson. On his first trip, Seal was able to snap photographs of Cuban officials, Nicaraguan soldiers, and Sandinista government officials hauling duffel bags of cocaine on which were set up on his plane. Seal even brought back some snaps of the then mythical Pablo Escobar, who was swaddled in a signature striped polo shirt. Seal's intel transformed him into the most significant witness in the United States' war on drugs almost overnight. It also made him a sitting duck for the Median cartel and many of their associates around the world. With his reliability as an informant vindicated, Seal was awarded a re-sentence with up to five years of probation. 
Unfortunately, he was also slapped with an arbitrary six months of house arrest, which was ordered by a disgruntled judge in Louisiana who felt aggrieved that a federal court had the final say. But by announcing to the world Barry Seal's precise location for the next six months, the judge had effectively signed his death warrant as well. It was on February 19, 1986, while working outside a Salvation Army facility as a part of his court order, that Seal was machine gunned to death by assassins who were sent by the Medellin cartel for betraying the allegiance that he made to Pablo Escobar. Seal had parked his car in the center's lot. At the same time, a man got out of another car in the slot and fired a Mac-10 submachine at the unsuspecting Seal. The poor man took six shots and died on the spot. Six Colombians were later arrested in regards to Seal's case. Three men named Luis Carlos Quintero Cruz, Bernardo Antonio Vasquez, and Miguel Velez were later charged with capital murder. It was a grisly end for a man who enjoyed a life filled with luxuries, lived life hard and fast and grand and loose. The exciting thing to me is to get yourself into a life-threatening situation, were Seal's words in a final interview shortly before his death. Now that's excitement, as he stated. American Made is a new crime drama featuring Tom Cruise, which is taken as a direct inspiration from Barry Seal, the TWA pilot who became a drug smuggler for the Medellin cartel and later became an informant for the DEA. The movie hardly purports to present itself as a documentary, which is directed by Doe Lyman, who reteams with Cruise after Edge of Tomorrow. The director has referred to it as a fun lie that is based on a true story. And perhaps its looseness with the facts is for the best, as conflicting accounts make it much more difficult to get a clear picture on certain aspects of Seals that were seemingly made for the movie's life. As played by Tom Cruise, Seal was a blend of balls and braggadocia, fond of stunts, and rarely registering the possibilities of danger or failure. Sarah White plays Seal's delightfully foul-mouthed wife in the movie who was alternately exasperated by his schemes and enthralled by the riches that he possessed. In reality, Seal was married around three times and had five children. He had a son and a daughter with the first wife, Barbara Bottoms, who he married in 1963 and subsequently divorced. He then went on to marry Linda McGar Ross in 1971, divorced a year later, then married Deborah Ann Dubois, with whom he went on to have three children in 1974. Overall, the film's a nice way to take a peek into Barry's supposed life. And that's pretty much it for today's video. What do you think of Escobar's right-hand man? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on for future videos. And with that said, we bid you farewell. So goodbye and have a great time.